But I thank God that we are in the house of the Lord because we never know when our last time is going to be Amen. to serve the Lord. So every chance we get, we ought to come here, give God glory and praise Amen. and worship. I just thank God for once again, just for saving me and just sanctify me, fill me with the Holy Ghost and being able to minister the Word of God and just being able to be a light and be a witness to somebody. And it's just a blessing and an honor to be in the Lord's house and to be ministered. Amen. Now, if we find it, can we all stand for the reading of God's Word? What was the chapter? Uh, Malachi chapter 3. It's the very last book. Okay. Before. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. Amen. Now, I'm reading Malachi verses, no, Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. Now, in number eight, it says, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, Whither in have we robbed you in tithes and offerings? You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now how here with, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven Amen. and pour you out a blessing. Yeah. Can I say that again? Pour you out a blessing yeah. that yeah. there shall not be room enough to receive it. Amen. Now, you all may be seated for reading the God's Word. Yeah. And I was going to say, if you want to throw a tomatoes or if you want to throw something at me, Throw it at this pulpit right here. I'm going to duck behind the pulpit just in case you want to throw something. Because this message is, although it's good, it's good for everybody. Now, when people talk about tithes and offering, they like to drill people on tithes and offering. Right. But I'm not right. going to drill you all on tithes and offering. Mm -hmm. Instead, we're going to go to a different topic. But it refers to tithes and offering. And the topic would be why it's important to bless God. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why that it's important to bless God is because He wants you to give Him glory and praise. Right. The reason why it's important to, him, to bless God is because His Son, Jesus, died on the cross for everybody. Right. And the Amen. reason why it's important to bless God is because he wants to bless you. Amen. He wants to see you succeed in the Christian walk of life. Right. He wants you to have the best things in life. He wants you to serve Him at your highs of highs and your lows of lows. Right. He wants your all in all praise. Amen. He wants your 24-7 praise. Amen. Not a 5% praise. Right. Not a 10% praise. Amen. Not a 50% praise. Right. Not even a 90% praise. Right. Not even a 99 and a half percent praise. Right. He wants your full 100% praise. Amen. And that is why it's important right. to bless God not only in tithes and offering, not only is it important to bless God with your praise, but it's important to bless God with just talking to somebody, Amen. just convincing them to come back to the house of the Lord. Right. Or if you have went through something that they've went through, hey, encourage them and tell them, hey, I've been in your shoes. Right. I know what it feels like to go through that. Amen. So this is why I'm here to tell you all that when you bless God, God will bless you. Will. And God will bless you with your obedience. Right. Now, a lot of people, when they talk about obedience, what is obedience? Obedience is pretty much just obeying what somebody tells you to do. Right. Now, in a work job, in a job, we have rules and regulations that we have to follow. Right. Now, when it comes to a job, what's the first thing we got to do as soon as we go in? We got to cl clock in. Clock in. And if you're in a restaurant, which I am, you got to wash your hands. Mm -hmm. Or if you're a mechanic or whatever you are, then I believe you got to wash your hands, you got to clean up. And that shows right. that you're clean. And mm -hmm. cleanliness is right next to holiness. Uh -huh. So that lets the yeah. boss know that you're clean and that you're ready to work. Mm -hmm. Now, once you wash up and once you wash your hands, then you go to work. Right. You just don't sit there and just say, I'm, okay. I'm just going to sit here and I'm just going to be lazy all day. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do nothing. And I'm already drawing a check, so it's not me to do nothing. 
So if we just sit down and if we're not doing anything, chances are our chick's not going to be that good. Uh-uh. And now here's the thing when it comes to work. Sometimes when you work, if there's problems uh, going in the way, if there's situations, sometimes you can lose more than what you can gain more. Right. For example, uh, when we have problems at work, sometimes the boss might say, well, because there's problems at work or because there's something going on at work, I'm going to cut their check off just a little bit mm-hmm. and make them suffer. And we shouldn't have to suffer when it comes to the kingdom of God. That's right. But you know, there's some bosses out there, there's some people oh, out there <laughs> that are you know, going to make you suffer. Because for one, if you're serving Jesus, well, the enemy hates Jesus. Right. He can't stand Jesus. No, can't. So therefore, if you're in the body of Christ, people are automatically going to say, well, I don't like you already because you're serving Jesus. Right. Well, then number two, if you're are serving Jesus, then they're going to say, well, let's see if they really are serving Jesus. Let's see if they're really blessing the kingdom of God. I'm going to start uh, taking some of their stuff away and see if they obey my word, if they obey uh, God. Well, if they see you obey God or whatever, then uh, they may try something else. Uh-huh. Well, if they try something else, then that pretty much tells them, hey, if you're still with God, if you're still serving Jesus, if you're still obeying His Word, then you're pretty, then they're saying, hey, I guess they are still serving God. They still are uh, who they say they are. Uh-huh. And trust me, people will know the difference when you are serving Jesus. People will know the difference when you're obeying His Word. Right. People will know the difference when you're real or not. Amen. Because the devil knows if you're real or not. Right. And so people will know the difference if you're That's real or not. Right. That's true. And in the church house, we obey God. We do what the Lord tells us to do in the church house. Right. But it's outside the church house to see if you're real or not. Right. Now, when it comes to that, it's better to give than to receive. Now, like I said, when it comes to the tithes and offerings, I don't care if you have just $1 in your pocket. I don't care if you have $100 in your pocket. If you've got just a bit of change in your pocket, if you got just a little, just enough to give God, hey, give a little to God because I guarantee you, when you give a little to God, He will bless you. He will restore your strength. He will give you energy. Right. He will give you the will to worship Him. Right. And when we think about tithes and offering, we expect to get money back. Yeah. But don't expect to get money back Right. When it comes to tithes and offering, well, you don't work way, when think. you give to the Lord, when you give your tithes and offerings to the Lord, you get a blessing back. Right. But a blessing can be anything. Mm-hmm. A blessing could not only just be money, but a blessing could be someone could pay your bill. Right. A blessing could be someone could fix your car mm-hmm. and you don't even have to pay them for it. A blessing could be your family could get saved. Yeah. Or your friends could get saved. Right. Or somebody that you've not seen the church in a long time mm-hmm. come to the house of the Lord. Somebody that you want to see get delivered, get saved, get sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and set free, come to the house of the Lord and get a blessing. Right. And because you're obeying God, the Lord will bless you for your obedience. Yeah, because you're out here praying, because you're out here right. fasting, right. because you're out reading your Bible, because you're talking to the Lord, because you're convincing somebody to come back to the Lord, if you're doing your best to serve the Lord right. at anything, whatever it is, then the Lord will bless you for it. Yeah, he will. He will bless he you will. and He will restore your strength. Yeah, and will. that's what it should be about. The tithes and offering is just... When we talk about tithes and offering, it's not, it's not that we're trying to drill you to give money. Now, don't get me wrong. You have some preachers, especially if they're TV preachers, that are all about the money. But I do, so I give me a plane. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> if we, if you know the real ministers of God, we're not out here telling you to give your tithes and offering because we want your money. We out here. To tell you to give your tithes and offerings so that way you can be blessed. Right. So that way you can have energy. That's so right. that way you can have strength. So that way you can have a chance to say, yes, 
I've been blessed by God. Yeah. And you can be blessed by God too. That's you know, right. sometimes when you just give a little, you can yeah. get more and you can get a double portion. Yeah. Now, for example, I'm going to give you an example of a double portion. Now, last month, at the mid of October, uh, I only draw just a little bit. And it came up, it was time to pay tithes. And I was like, oh God, oh my God. Uh, I, I, pay, I pay my TV bill. I paid my uh, Series XM. I paid my <laughs> ink so I could pay the printer. But when it came to my tithes, I was like, oh God. Uh, Lord, now, you know that I don't got enough to pay tithes and everything. You know that I'm drawing short of my check. And I've only got very little left. So, Lord, I mean, you got to help me out here. What am I going to do? And the Lord was saying to me when I was in my room, you see that change you've been saving up in there? I was like, yeah. He's like, why don't you use that for your tithes? And I was like, uh, now, God, you know that I've been saving all that change just be saving in everything. <laughs> I, I'm keeping that change. He's like, prove me wrong. See if I don't bless you. Give that change to me. And I was like, God, is this really your voice or not? Because am I hearing things or not? He's like, please, j j just try me. See if I don't bless you. So I was like, well, God, you blessed me with all that change. You blessed me to be able to save all that change. So you know what, God? That change is yours. I'm going to give you that change. And when I counted all that change, it was more than enough. I had to have $42. And I already had $10. But guess what I had in my change? I had $25 <laughs> in my change. More than enough to give to the Lord. So I was like, you know what, Lord? This change is yours. And I'm going to bless you with the change. I'm going to bless you with this offering. Bless you with this tithes. So I gave the change. And my check for this time came out. And guess what? I got a double portion from my check. But not only did I get a double portion from my check, some people that uh, come to the drive-thru, some people that are outside of work gave me a portion. So I was very blessed. So yeah. I got triple back than what I bargained for. Great, and I had way more than enough, not only to help mom out, but to help church out, but to help uh, some other things out that I had to get out. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very blessed and I'm very happy that I was able to get that change and that I obeyed God. Right. Now what happened if I didn't obey God? I probably would still be uh, stuck in the hills and mountains and probably would not have uh, some bills paid off. But thanks to obedience, yep. I learned a long time ago that obedience is better than sacrifice. Right. And when you Word obey said. the Spirit of God, the Word Lord said. will bless you yeah, no yeah. matter what. Yeah. And He says, prove Him wrong, that He is God. And sometimes, God just wants you to prove Him wrong. And sometimes we may have to go borrow things. Sometimes it, we don't like... Let me put it for a better example. Sometimes we don't like to go borrow stuff. Sometimes right. we have to have help from other people. Right. Sometimes we have to help help ourselves. Right. Although we think we can do it ourselves, mm. we cannot do this on our own. Amen. And that's when it said that's what it talks about with God proving him wrong. Right. God will bring you resources. God will bring you people in life right. to help you out. That's true. But the question is are you willing to be helped out or not? Right. Do you want to be helped in your job? Do you want to be helped in your situation? Do you want to be helped when it comes to your family and friends? Do you want to be helped when it right. comes to getting saved? Right. Or do you want to be hurt? Right. I don't know about you all, but yeah. I think I want to take the help Amen. more than I want to take the hurt. Help. I want God's help yep, yep, more yep. than I want the hurt because when it's not the fact that you're hurting the pastor. It's not the fact that you're hurting the church. It's the fact that you're hurting the Spirit of God. Right. And God is hurt when you don't obey His Spirit. God yeah. is hurt yeah. 
when you don't trust and believe in Him, right. God is heard trust. Himself. And trust me, when the Lord is hurt, that is a very dangerous thing because mm -hmm. God can be mad, God can be angry, but when His Spirit is broken, it's just like a whole thing of air just comes out. Right. And it sucks to see God hurt. Yeah. God wants to bless you. God wants to be there for you. God wants to give you the best things in life. But you got to believe and trust in Him. You got to learn to bless the Lord at all times. Right. Not just sometimes. Not just whenever you feel like it. Not just whenever you ain't got enough. But you got to bless Him at all times. Amen. And the Lord will bless you. Trust me, yeah. I know this for a fact. Yeah, that the Lord will bless you. I and I'm a key will. witness that the Lord will bless you. Yeah, but you got to put your trust and faith in Him. Right. And that's like doctors. Now, don't get me wrong. I love our local doctors. I think we got some of the best doctors when it comes to just seeing them, how you doing and everything. But sometimes we got to go to another doctor. Right. And don't get me wrong, the ultimate doctor is Dr. Jesus. Amen. The ultimate doctor Amen. is Dr. Amen. God. Right. That's who we got to put our trust in is Dr. Jesus and Dr. God. Uh -huh. But we also got doctors and physicians that God's put here on earth right. that can take care of us and that God's gave wisdom to. Right. Sometimes you have to go to another doctor in order to get help. Now, don't get me wrong. You may like your doctor and you may have trust and faith in them. But sometimes they just don't have enough resources. They just don't have the answers. No, right. Sometimes you got to switch partners. You got to switch and go to another a partner. Right. And that's like serving God. If you used to go out here and do drugs, if you used to go out here and bless the devil, why is it when we come to the house of the Lord that we can't bless God? That's true. Why is it that a long time ago, when we were serving the devil, we was out here partying, doing drugs. Yeah. We was out here blowing money and just making it rain all over in the club yeah. and all over the dance floor. No, but when it comes to providing for the pastor, when it comes to providing for the church, when it comes to blessing the entire world, blessing the nation, or giving back to those that need help, why is it that when it comes to obeying God, we have a hard time of obeying the Spirit of God? Yeah. I believe a lot of times is because we're not used to being blessed ourselves. And that's the thing. When we're out in the world, we're used to people just handing us stuff. But when we are with God, sometimes it's hard for us because we're not used to being blessed and we're not used to having the best person in life. But when we get used to having Jesus in life, when we're used to having God in our life, mm -hmm. trust me, the Lord will bless you. Yeah, He will. And if you know I'm better, I'm and if you know better, don't blame God. Right. If you know that you've got to come to church, if you know that it's 12 o'clock or 6 o'clock, but yet the last minute you have an excuse like, <laughs> I'm going to cut the grass. Or yeah. I gotta go to a birthday party. Yeah. Or I gotta go go grocery shopping. Right. I gotta go do laundry. Uh -huh. If you know that you gotta come to church at a certain time, but yet you put something at the very last minute, don't blame God. No. If you know that you got ten dollars, if you know that you can give a dollar, but yet you refuse to give one dollar, or if you refuse to even give a penny, don't blame <laughs> God. If you know that you got to read your Bible. But you don't read your Bible, don't blame God. Yeah. If you know that you got to pray, but you don't pray, don't blame God. That's right. That's if you right. know that you got to seek His Word and you got to seek His will, but you don't seek His will, don't blame God. That's right. If you know that you got to pray for somebody, if you know that the Lord told you to pray for somebody, or if you know that you need to praise and worship God, but you don't praise and worship Him, if you don't pray for him, don't blame God. That's right. If you know that you want to get blessed, 
and you know what it takes to get blessed, right. but if you choose not to get blessed, right. don't blame God. Right. Don't blame God for your problems in life. And sometimes the devil does put stuff on us. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it's a God test, yeah. but there's sometimes it's yeah. life, and right. sometimes it's ourselves. Right. Sometimes we miss out on blessings. We miss out on the things in life because it's our fault. Amen. And the reason why, especially that we don't have prayers in the schools, that we don't have Bible verses in schools, that we don't have prayer and Bibles all around the world, it's not because of the sinners and backsliders. No. It's not because of the people out in the world. It's because of the Christians. Right. It is Amen. our fault that the reason why that prayers are out of school is the reason why that people are not getting blessed. It's the reason why that people are not getting healed, sealed, right. delivered, getting set free, getting the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. getting sanctified. It's because the Christians' fault. Right. It's our fault that we're not taking a stand to God. When it comes to Muslims praying, right. whatever time they pray, when it comes to them praying, hey, they get up and pray. Yep. When it comes to the gays and the lesbians doing what they want to do, hey, they all take a stand for yep. it. But when it comes to the children of God, when it comes to something being done wrong in the house of God, when it right, comes to sin, right. when it comes to something that should be taking a stand and we don't take a stand, it's the Christian's fault. That's right. So why are we blaming God for everything right. when we should be putting the blame on ourselves? And the devil. That is the truth. That is the truth. Now, should tithes and offerings matter? You exactly right. They should matter. Tithes yeah, and offerings should. should matter. And the only thing is, God requires just 10%. And 10% is nothing to God. And honestly, let's be for real. God doesn't need your money. God doesn't no. need you. But He wants to bless you. He wants to give you more. He wants to be there. Because why? He's an awesome God. Yes, he He's is. an almighty God. Yeah, he, is. he is our Lord and Savior. Yes. He is the Alpha and Omega. Amen. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. Amen. And I'm proud to Amen. say that the Lord God is our Lord and Savior. Yeah. And I'm proud to say that He is a blessing. Because yes. if it wasn't for God, a lot of us wouldn't be here today. Amen. If it wasn't Amen. for God creating earth, if it wasn't for God giving us a second chance, right. we wouldn't be here. Amen. If it wasn't for God allowing us to worship Him in spirit and truth, we wouldn't be here. Thank if it Jesus. wasn't for God Amen. allowing us to have breath in our life, right. we wouldn't be here. Amen. If it wasn't for God allowing us to walk through the church doors, then we wouldn't be here. Yes. If it wasn't for God allowing us to have a roof over our head, clothes on oh, our back, yeah. shoes on our feet, Something to eat, something to drink. Right. Hey, a lot of us wouldn't be here today. Amen. But thanks to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Praise thanks Jesus. to God Praise Almighty, He Lord. gives us blessings upon blessings. Yes. So that's why it's Blessing. very important to have tithes and offering. Yeah. Not because we want your money. Not because the people want your money. Right. Because we want you to be blessed. Right. We right. want you to have the best things in life. Amen. We want you to be able to go out and say, Hey, I know it's rough. I know when it comes to the bills, right. it is tough. Really? I know when it comes really? to not having a dime in your pocket, right. that it is rough and that it is hard. But I'm here to tell you, if you just give him just 10%, That's right. he will bless you and give you a double portion. Uh, yes. He will give you the desires of your needs. Amen. Because when it comes to needs, the needs that we need are a lot of needs. We need food to eat. Right. We need things to drink. Yeah. We need a vehicle to drive. We right. need a house over our head. Uh, we need a rooftop over our head. Yeah. We need clothes on our back. We need shoes on our feet. Amen. I'm very thankful for just those little things. Right. I'm very thankful for just the breath of life itself. Amen. I'm very thankful you, just Lord. to have a family. Thank Not you, only Lord. just a blood-related family, but a church-related family. Amen. I'm blessed to have friends. I'm blessed to have true people, Amen. true men and women of God that will stand up and tell you the truth no That's matter right. what. That's and right. sometimes us ministers have to be corrected. Sometimes us singers have to be corrected. Right. Sometimes we have to be taught in order to bounce back. That's right. But when it comes to obeying God, when it comes to blessing the word, when it comes to blessing 
the Spirit of God. Trust me, the Lord will bless you. But it's up to you to bless God. Amen. And not only just by tithes and offering, bless God with your praise. Amen. Bless God with your worship. That's right. Bless God by reading your Bible. Amen. Bless God by seeking His will. Yes. Bless yes. God Amen. by praying. Bless God by saying, Lord, please save my family. Yes. Bless God by saying, please, Lord, save my friends. Bless God by saying, please, Lord, give me oh, yes, some God. meals. Yes, give me yes, some God. food to eat. I don't care what it is. As long as I am fed, please give me a meal. Amen. Give me something to drink. Lord God, if I need to get my medicine, please provide a way for me to get my medicine. Right. If I need to get my car fixed, Lord God, please let me get my car fixed and Amen. put somebody in my lap to get my car fixed. Amen. If I need to go to work and get a job, Please, Lord, provide a way so that way I can go and get a job and get some work in. So that way I can put food on the table for my family, put food on the table for my children, put food on the table for my friends, put food on the table for the church, Amen. put food on the table for the people. And give, Lord, please, Lord, let me be a blessing to somebody yes. so that way I can go somebody, out and bless Lord. somebody else. Amen. That's what it's all about. It's blessing God. It's not to receive anything, but it's better to give than to receive. Amen. It's better to obey than sacrifice. When you learn to bless God, God will bless you no matter what. But you got to put your full and whole heart when it comes to blessing God. Now, if you're out here just giving it, just to put on a show, yeah. just for entertainment, then chances are... The Lord may not bless you. He may bless you, but you might as well pat yourself on the back because you're just worshiping yourself. But when you Lord, and when you learn to give God glory and praise, when you learn to bless God, then He will bless you no Amen. matter what. But when you don't bless God, He will get you, He will get your He will get it one way or another when you don't bless God. And that's one thing that I hate. I let me give you an example on that one. <laughs> the last year, I was uh, I decided not to give my ties last year, and I was like, oh, okay, Lord, I need this right here because I, I got to pay bills and everything. So when it came to my check coming out, a hundred dollars was gone. I was like. Okay, am I getting punked? Am I getting played? Because I know I, I got $100 somewhere, but I end up losing $100. Mm -hmm. But it came to the next a couple weeks. I did not get my ties once again because I needed the money and everything. I was like, God, you know I need this. So when it came to the next week, another $100 was gone. I was like, Okay, God, now this is, this is really getting serious, man. I'm losing, I've lost $200 within the last two, three weeks. What is going on? You know what he told me? He said, why didn't you bless me? I was like, well, God, you know I needed, needed it and everything. He was like, well, I could have blessed you more. And I was like, you could have blessed me more? What are you talking about? And then I got to thinking, oh, I know what it is. I did not pay the tithes, so therefore I did not get a blessing. And I was like, uh, okay, God. So from there on out, I began to give my tithes no matter what. And the Lord's been blessing me ever since. And He told me, son, it's not that I don't want your tithes and offering. It's not that I'm drilling you to give money. It's because I'm doing this because I want to bless you. I want to give you strength. I want to restore your energy. I want to give you power, not only in the Word of God, but power in my spirit. Amen. And that's what it comes down to. The reason why a lot of Christians, if you want to go to the next level in God, you got to do some multiple steps in order to get to, get to the next level in God. See, when we get saved and everything, we automatically assume, and I'm going to get ready to close with this, get ready to assume that 
we just come here, we just sit down, and expect not to do nothing. But right. if you want to go to the next level in God, you got to do some multiple steps. First of all, not only do you got to get saved, you got to stay saved. Right. Not only do you get to stay saved, a lot of people don't talk about this. You got to be sanctified. Yeah. Now, a lot of churches won't talk about sanctification nowadays uh -uh. because they're not doing stuff that they're supposed to be doing or they're not obeying God's word or they're not sanctified themselves. But sanctification is next to salvation. Mm -hmm. And sanctification, with that comes the Holy Ghost. And with the Holy Ghost comes tithes and offering. With tithes and offering comes praise and worship. Amen. With praise and worship comes glory. And with glory, because giving it's your all to God. And when you give your all to God, when you learn the importance of blessing God, that's when you begin to say, you know what? I'm going to give it my all. I'm going to bless you no matter what. Whether it's money, whether it's through my praise, whether it's through worship, whether it's through song, whether it's through ministry, whether it's through going out here and touching right. the community, right. whatever it is, I'm willing yeah. to bless you no matter what. And I thank God for Him just blessing us. Not because He has to, because He wants to. Because He wants to be the Lord and Savior. He wants to be number one right, in life. Right. If He is not number one in life, watch out. Because although He's a loving and a graceful God, He is a jealous God. He does not want nothing to be in front of Him. Whether it's a cell phone, whether it's a girlfriend, whether right. it's a boyfriend, whether it's the internet, whether it's family, friends, whether it's money, whether it's cars, whether it's clothes, whether it's high fashion and jewelry, whatever you put in front of God, that is your God. A lot of people don't realize it. Right. But when you put things in front of God, watch out. Because God will be like, why are you putting this in front of me? Why are you not giving me your all and your will? And sometimes, in order to get a blessing from God, sometimes you have to cut something out of life. Right. You have to cut something that's in the way of your blessing. What is in the way of you getting the blessing? Is it money? Is it an internet? Is it a TV show? Right. Is it a cell phone? Is it some, what is stopping you from blessing the Spirit of God? Whatever is stopping you from blessing the Word of God, whatever is stopping you from being a blessing, you got to cut it out. Amen. And sometimes the very thing that you love, you have to cut that out. Right. Sometimes the very thing that you do the most might be the very thing that's stopping you from blessing the Word of God. Might be the very thing that's stopping you from blessing God Himself. But when you learn to put God first, when you learn to give God all glory and praise, God will bless you no matter what. And I'm here to tell you today, if you just try just to bless God, try something new this week on blessing God. Whatever you haven't tried before, I guarantee you, if you will try it, if you will try God's Spirit, if you will try to bless God, whether it's going to a new doctor, which sometimes we don't like to go to a new doctor, but if we want to get healed, if we want to get the feeling better, if we want to be better health-wise, sometimes we do have to go to a new doctor. Yeah. And at first when I had my surgery back in 2012, I had seen Dr. Mary Pion in Whitesburg. Well, when he couldn't find the problem, mom switched me over to another, another doctor. And the other doctor found out what the problem was. Right. And it took the other doctor to find out what the problem is right. in order for me to get back on my toes, in order for me to get back up, right. to be fully healthy. Sometimes you do have to switch a doctor. Yeah. Sometimes you have to switch... A job you have to go to another job and even though you've loved working at a job sometimes you do have to go to a new job yeah sometimes you have to switch Bibles if you're reading a new international Bible 
Read the King James Version Bible. Yeah. Which, to be honest, the King James Version Bible is the best version Bible yes, ever. Right. And it's the true word of God, right. in my opinion. And I will stick with the King James Version any day of the week. Amen. Me too. And sometimes, if you're praying, if you've only prayed five minutes a day, pray 50 minutes a day. Sometimes if you read your Bible 30 minutes a day, read it 45 minutes a day. If you're praying somewhere, if you're praying in the kitchen, you may have to go to the living room. If you're praying for a family member, say, Lord, help them to get back on their toes and to get salvation and to come to you before it's too late. Whatever it is, sometimes you have to switch up the routine. Right. And sometimes switching up the routine is a good thing. Because yeah. when you switch up the routine, it confuses the devil. It confuses the enemy. And the devil's like, now wait a minute. They used to doing this at a certain time. Now they're doing this at this time. Mm -hmm. I can't keep up with them. Or they used to do this, but now they're doing this. I can't keep up with them. And before you know it, you'll have that devil so beat up and everything. And the devil... It's just going to be like, you know what? I, I can't even mess with them. I'm going to leave them alone. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee you, when you learn to bless God and be obedient, right. the Lord will bless you. Amen. And if you don't get nothing else from this message today, the only thing I can say on this, why it's, let me answer the question, why it's important to bless God? Because it's not that God doesn't want you there is because God wants you to give your all and your everything. Amen. When you give your all and your everything, the Lord will say, you know what? Now that you gave me your all and your everything, and now that I know that you're with me, now I can go on and start blessing you. Amen. And sometimes we get in the way of the blessing. Right. But when we learn to get out of the way, God can get in the way. So it takes us sometimes to get out the way in order for God to get in the way. Amen. And Amen. would you rather for God to be in the way and bless you or for then for you or would you rather to be in the way and God to be out the way? That's right. I don't know about you all, but I'd rather for God to be in the way Amen. than for me to be in the way. Because... If I get in the way, I may mess up and I may do something that I might regret. Right. But if I let God get in the way, I know for a fact that God won't mess things up. And God will provide and will be there no matter what. Amen. And I thank Praise God for Lord. just this. And I hope that someone's listening not only around the world, but here. And I just want to say, I give God glory and praise and let's just bow our heads right quick.